Why are some poli- you know, we've been talking throughout the week about the impacts of politics, the impact of politics on average people, on working people, on the poor, on the middle class. What and, and, and at a certain level, at the surface level, you know, some of this stuff is pretty obvious. You know, the game of chicken right now that the Republicans and Democrats are playing in the uh, House of Representatives with uh, Boehner and Cantor putting forward this bill to fund the FAA, but only if the airlines are able to call repeated election uh, uh, certification votes and anybody who fails to vote, that's considered a no vote. So basically all the airlines and the railroad companies can get rid of their unions. And, and of course, the Senate's not going along with it, so the FAA is not funded. And, and, and therefore, 100,000 people are out of work. That's 100,000 people who don't have a paycheck, who may lose their home, who are at, at increased risk for everything from spousal and child abuse to depression and suicide. What is the deal? How, how, you know, beyond the obvious, is there a macro, a big picture to this? Professor James Gilligan is on the line with us. He's a clinical professor of psychiatry at the, uh, in the School of Medicine, adjunct professor in the School of Law, collegiate professor in the School of Arts and Sciences, and, uh, uh, and I'm sorry, James, uh, Professor Gilligan, I don't have the name of the school. Oh, it's New York University. Oh, at New York University. Thank you very much. And author of the new book, Why Some Politicians Are More Dangerous Than Others. Dangerous? Well, dangerous because their policies kill people. Uh, what I discovered, uh, frankly, much to my surprise, that's not what I was looking for, uh, but I was trying to understand what increases rates of lethal violence in America. That includes both suicide and homicide. Right. Uh, what I found to my surprise was that corresponded to the, the peaks and valleys in this, the, the increases and decreases, uh, corresponded to the presidential election cycle. When uh, Republicans got uh, elected to the White House, the rates of suicide and homicide uh, have increased uh, dramatically to a statistically significant degree uh, since 1900, when uh, this country first started recording these statistics on a yearly basis. Right. When Democrats come in, the rates of both forms of lethal violence go down, and this in turn can be related to the degree of economic, social and economic uh, stress and distress, which increase under Republicans and decrease under Democrats. That's, That's remarkable. Hard. Um, I, I have been, uh, for the entire time that we've been doing this show, we're in our ninth year now, and uh, I have been talking about this article I read on the BBC Wednesday, 18 September 2002, the headline, and you tell me if this comports with your research, I'll just give you a quick snapshot of this, the headline on the BBC, more suicides under conservative rule. And let me just share a couple of sentences from it with you. It says, the suicide rate increases under conservative governments, research suggests, uh, this was a study done by Australian scientists of Australia and the United Kingdom. It was from 1901 to 1998. It was an entire century. And uh, quoting them, oh, and they also say uh, that they adjusted for factors of World War II and, uh, uh, and periods of drought. Took into account periods of drought in World War II because of their economic and psychological impact. After adjusting for these factors, the figures clearly show the highest rates of suicide occurred when both conservative state and federal governments were in, po in power. Middle-aged and older men were most at risk. When conservatives ruled both state and federal governments, men were 17% more likely to commit suicide than when labor, their version of the Democrats, was in power. Women were 40% more likely to kill themselves. The research was published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health, and they wrapped the article up with this sentence, which is just mind-boggling, out of the BBC. Overall, the figures suggest that 35,000 people would not have died had the conservatives not been in power. That's the last paragraph of the article. Yes, th those figures are exactly, uh, they exactly correspond to the findings for the United States, which, uh, which I discovered, which I say I discovered it. <laughs> I discovered something that was hiding in plain sight. Right. Uh, but these are the government's own statistics. They're gathered under both Republican and Democratic administrations. So there's no question they're, they're, they're not uh, partisan figures. Right. Uh, but the uh, uh, experience in, the, in uh, Great Britain and Australia with suicide corresponds to ours. What I added to this was the same is true with homicide. So I, I have also joined these two uh, for, forms of violent deaths into one statistic of just uh, violent death rates. Uh, but all three of these, suicide, homicide, and the sum of both, 
increase under Republicans and decrease under Democrats to a statistically significant degree. I mean, not every single year, but if you look at the cum- cumulative as- uh, uh, effect sure. over the years, uh, it's it's. Well, and there's always going to be some slop over. I mean, for example, the first year of the Obama administration, everybody screams, oh, look at the debt he ran up. Well, he was operating under Bush's last budget. So I mean, yeah, it's exactly. like, you know, so a lot of policies take a couple of years. You know, the, the regulatory agencies are still stacked with Bush appointees, for example, even now. Um, to what extent was the is your research purely federal or did you look at the individual states? I looked at individual states from one uh, perspective, uh, not over time, how they change over time, but rather how they differ from each other mm. at the same time, namely during the election years 2000 and 2004. What I found was that the uh, Republican-dominated areas uh, also had increased rates of suicide and homicide, just as the Republican-dominated eras did, uh, compared with the Democratic-dominated areas and eras. In other words, the so-called red states, the states that voted for the Republican candidate, George W. Bush, had significantly higher rates of suicide and homicide than the blue states, the Republican uh, the Democratic did. states. I'm sorry, the Democratic states did. So, uh, I'm and sorry. it corresponds to other forms of violent death. The, the rate of capital punishment in the red states is literally 22 times as high as in the blue states. I mean, wow. it's not just illegal violence or, or suicide is really not illegal, but uh, uh, it's another form of it. But even the form of violence called capital punishment right. is, is staggeringly 2,200 percent higher. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Are you familiar with the uh, research of Richard Wilkerson and Kate Pickett over in the UK? Uh, they wrote the book The Spirit Level and a previous book, Why Inequality Matters. Yes, I have followed their work with great interest for many years. They're, they're excellent epidemiologists. They are, and they have a brilliant website at uh, equalitytrust.org.uk. And one of the things that they point out is that when societies become more unequal, not only does violence go up, but so does teen pregnancy, so does uh, sexually transmitted diseases, so does the abuse of both legal and illegal psychiatric drugs or narcotics, um, so does uh, uh, you know regular just g- generic crime. Uh, they have, as I recall, 16 or 18 indices. And th- right across the board, the more unequal a society gets. In, in the minute we have left, sir, to what extent do you think that Republican rule versus Democratic rule is the consequence of increased or decreased inequality versus specific policies? Uh, well, uh, you, you can't really separate the policies from the inequality. The inequality results from Republican policies. But you're absolutely right. And uh, what, what uh, Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett found, in, again, in Great Britain and many other countries, uh, they also did study the U.S., right. uh, certainly corresponds to what I have found in the U.S. There are three main factors that I've found uh, I, I think help to explain the increase Very in quickly, please. under Republicans. One is unemployment, a second is recessions, and a third is inequalities of income and wealth. Uh-huh. All of those have increased under Republicans dramatically during the 20th century. They increase when there is a Republican administration, and they decrease uh, to an almost equal degree under Democrats. Uh, and I believe it's clearly understandable that uh, the degree of despair and and humiliation and the feeling of failure that uh, comes about when people are laid off uh, from their jobs can lead to suicide or homicide or or both. And sometimes both. Sometimes you'll read in the newspapers, everybody does, you know, people who kill their families and themselves. Right. Professor James, Professor James Gilligan, his new book, Why Some Politicians Are More Dangerous Than Others.